tonight's short program, she was stunning again, earning perfect sixes from seven of the nine judges. A tough act to follow, but Sarah Hughes skated up to the task. With one of her most inspiring performances to date, the 15-year-old is currently second. But before that duel comes the pairs final, where Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman must rebound from a disappointing showing Thursday night. Now they trail the indomitable Hartzels, who in spite of a scary fall in practice, competed heroically to secure first place. The 2001 U.S. Nationals continue next as history waits in Boston. Saturday night in Boston. It has long been one of America's great sports towns. The first city of American figure skating as well, having produced many of the legendary names in this sport over the past century. And we welcome you inside the Fleet Center for our coverage of the 2001 State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships. One of the early groups of ladies on the ice warming up the top contenders a little bit later. Michelle Kwan has already arrived in the building. She is the leader after the short program looking for her fifth U.S. title, but Sarah Hughes is right behind her at the age of 15 looking for her first gold medal here. And Angela Nikodinov in third place is certainly within striking distance. And hi, everybody. I'm Terry Gannon. Hopefully you were with us this afternoon here in Boston to see Timothy Gable win his first gold medal in men's skating. And both he and Todd Eldridge were named afterwards to the world championship teams. They will represent the U.S. in Vancouver in March. You can catch that right here on ABC as well. Plenty of action to come, though, and we welcome in Olympic champion Peggy Fleming right now. We've enjoyed the action, but we do miss one person, and we sure do. that is Dick Button. He is not here this weekend here in Boston. He is still recovering from a fall that he suffered a couple of weeks ago, Peggy. And, and Dick, I know you're watching. I miss you, and I hope you get well, and, and please try to not drive those poor nurses crazy. I'm sure you're doing that. <laughs> Fat chance. No chance of that happening, but <laughs> right. get back here as soon as you can, Dick. We do miss you. <laughs> what about the ladies' championship a little bit later on? The top contenders will take the ice. Michelle Kwan right now is in the lead. Well, Terry, for the first time in three years, there's an American lady who could beat Michelle Kwan, and she's only 15. Last night, Sarah Hughes had a beautiful short program, even though she had to follow a shower of perfect 6.0s for Michelle. Sarah Hughes is a focused competitor at 15 and has a real shot at winning. She doesn't get intimidated at all, no matter who's on the ice either, but Michelle Kwan has been brilliant so far. Live coverage of the ladies' championship a little bit later on. But right now, we turn our attention to the pairs competition, the free skate, and we welcome in Olympic silver medalist Peter Carruthers. And Peter, going into the free skate, there certainly was a major upset brewing. Well, the brother and sister team, Stephen and Danielle Hartzell, had a rough road to the top. Earlier Tuesday, they had a bad fall and a lift. Stephen took 12 stitches to his head, but they were very determined. They wanted to skate. They performed a great short program with a lot of emotion. That left them in first place. However, the defending champions, Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman, they had mistakes in their program. They need to really pick it up if they hope to retain their title. So Steve Hartzell, 12 stitches and a little bit less hair, but it was <laughs> worth it because the Hartzells were in the lead heading into the free skate, trying to pull off that upset over the defending champions, Ina and Zimmerman. Scott and Dulaban were in third at that point. Here's how Peggy, Peter, and I called the free skate. And we are set to go here at the Fleet Center in Boston. The championship about to be decided in pairs as are two available spots on the world championship team. And here's the team in third place after the short program. Tiffany Scott, Philip Dulabon, the 2000 U.S. silver medalist. There are their parents. Scott's on the right, the Dulabons on the left. They really want to make this world team. It's going to be a big disappointment for them if they do not. Skating to piano concerto number three in C major.
They were making some mistakes in the warm-up. They need to stay focused and not rush the timing on the jumps or the throws. And these are those side-by-side -side triple toe loops. Whoa. Very solid, good opening. This may set the tone for this program for them. Great way to start. The free skate, four and a half minutes long, worth two-thirds of the overall score. Oh, that's an unfortunate ball right there. Just catching an edge in an odd way. You go down so fast. And they're off. She was tilted there. I think that breaks your focus when you have a, an unexpected fall like that on something simple. You, you kind of anticipate falling on something difficult, but not just stroking around. just jolts you when it happens. Absolutely. I've been there. Well, they need to settle themselves down and forget that happened and go on. And now they're approaching their pro triple south cow back inside edge takeoff. Sometimes a fall like that knocks some sense into you. Really? <laughs> Not only are there parents here, but Tiffany is from Hanson, Massachusetts. She has a lot of family and friends in the Fleet Center tonight watching. Throw double axle. Very nice. A good smooth landing, lots of speed. He's not Behind. throwing her too hard. So that's unfortunate. Side by side, double axles. When your partner falls like that, you look back and you basically say, oh no, but you try to get back in unison as quickly as possible. Well, they're not 100% healthy either. Tiffany twisted her knee in practice on December 27th. She says it's still tender, and Phillip's actually competing with a fracture in his left wrist, which he's had for about a year. He originally broke it when he was 17, and it just never healed correctly. beginning and then another fall after that tough performance for them their parents smiles on their faces a lot of determination for this pair they were the silver medalists last year they went to the world championships finished ninth they dearly love to stand on the podium and go back to worlds tiffany scott philip dulabon they had a fall on nothing really very difficult just skating along watch his right foot collide with the left and down they go she falls over the top of him, 
you just don't want to start your program like that. But then they followed through here. Throw triple Salkow. I like the distance it carries across the ice and a very nice position on the landing. There's a look at the panel of nine judges working here in Boston. The average years judging skating, 18 average years at Nationals, nine. That's an experienced panel, Peggy. Yes, and the required elements for this long program, they have to put in three to five different lifts, one to two throw jumps, one side-by-side -side spin the and Smart musical for interpretation. Scott and Philip Dulabon for technical merit. 5.3, 5.3, 5.4, 5. And now the marks 5. for Scott 4. and Dulabon. As always, there'll be two sets. Technical merit marks. The first set, there they are. And these mistakes and their marks for hurting them to shore on the first mark. We have nice choreography in there. Skating. Presentation marks indicate that. Presentation marks up to 5.8, so we'll have to wait and see how those marks for Scott and Dulabon hold up throughout the evening. Now there's Paul Binnebos in the crowd. Great to see him back. He had that horrific crash last year during practice, during a lift. Fractured his skull, nearly died, but he is back here in the Fleet Center watching the action and about to watch his former partner, Laura Handy, take the ice with Jonathan Hunt next. Dubai. State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Excedrin Migraine for migraine pain relief. Chevrolet. If only everything was as dependable as a Chevy, Chevy will be there. And Visa, the preferred card of the U.S. figure skating team. It's everywhere you want to be. Back in Boston as the 2001 State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships continue. Laura Handy, Jonathan Hunt on the ice, about to begin their free skate. And Peter Carruthers took to the ice recently to demonstrate the height of hair's lips. I'm here with American champion Kyoko Ina for a closer look at a very spectacular pair lift. It's called the back hand-to-hand -hand press lift. Beautiful, graceful, yes it is. But folks, she is about 11 feet off the ice. Kyoko has to have complete trust in her partner, John Zimmerman. They actually learn these lifts on the floor so that when they do transfer to the ice, it's a safe environment for the skaters. A warm welcome, please, for Laura Handy and Jonathan Hunt. Well, Laura Handy knows all about the dangers and the risks involved in pair skating. Of course, we mentioned her former partner, Paul Binnebos. They had to Horrific crash last year, but here she is with Jonathan Hunt trying to come back from fourth place after the short program. We're skating to music from Shostakovich. Nice height on that triple twist. Very light. nice side by side double axles their single skills and their pair skills looking good so far and the throw triple loop is back outside edge takeoff oh Just very low in the knee yes she wanted to save that landing have to anticipate more than that come out of those high throws City, Jonathan from Rochester, Michigan. This pair has only been together some six months. 
to be a little bit more than that. That's all, though. I mentioned fourth place after the short program. You think about some of the young teams, and we talk about the World Championships. It's not too early, believe it or not, to start thinking about the Olympic Games, only 13 months away. You know these skaters are. the landing enough and just crumbles. Who said it was easy to come out of the air three feet above the ice and land backwards on one foot? <laughs> Never looked easy to me. and muddy through here. Very important for a pair team to charge at the end and show the judges that you have the same. See right there, unison problems. They're falling off, unfortunately. Want to finish strong, and they're really moving slow. That'll be the first thing the judges will think about when they start scoring is when they last saw. Their final move is outside death spiral. Well, that is a disappointing performance. Laura Handy, Jonathan Hunt will check their marks in a moment. Up next, Danielle and Steve Hartzell in the lead after the short program and trying to pull off a major upset here in Boston. And don't forget, as soon as the pairs are done, we'll have our live coverage of the ladies' championship. The ladies' free skate coming up in just a little bit. Can Michelle Kwan win her fifth U.S. title? She's going after world championship number four in March. She's got more perfect 6.0s at nationals than anyone in history. But right behind her in second place, Sarah Hughes. She was third last year before a top five finish at the world championships just three years ago, the 98 junior champion of the U.S. And Jenny Kirk, bit of a surprise in fourth place, a local youngster, just 16 years of age from the Boston suburbs. So who do you think is going to win? Log on to ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports, and vote. We'll show you the results at the end of tonight's competition. Getting ready to skate, Danielle and Steve Hartzell, the 99 U.S. champions. Earlier this week in practice, they experienced a fall during a lift. Steve ended up with 12 stitches in his head, and he described to us what was going through his mind during the crash. We're taught when, when we first learn lifts, since the girl's a lot higher up in the air, to, um, to try to protect her, protect her at first and, and then try to protect herself second since um, the girl has a lot farther to fall, and that's basically what I was thinking. I wanted her to be, be okay first, and then um, I tried to protect myself, but I <laughs> guess it didn't work too well. Representing the Detroit Skating Club in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, a warm welcome now for Danielle Hartzell and Steve Hartzell. Steve Hartzell thinking about his sister, his partner, during that fall and protecting her they don't have anything to prove at this point because they have been so courageous throughout the past year and in the short program, but they would love to win the gold here. Well, their strengths in their skating has always been their speed and their power. And perseverance. Oh, absolutely. 
in the warm-up, they were just barreling through their pair elements. They looked terrific. The question is, can they maintain that high level through this program? Their first move, the split, triple twist. Very nice. Skating with a lot of speed. Danielle is tough as nails when it comes to these throws. She has no fear. Throw triple south cow. Look at that. Very solid. Right on, just like they did in the warm-up. What a landing. 99 national champions out last year because of the fractured knee that Danielle sustained last December. But they are back. Side by side, triple toe loop. Oh, oh. too bad. She fell. Trying to get it back here, side by side, double axles, and she goes down again. That's very unfortunate to have two falls like that, back to back. And they were so solid in this warm up, we really thought that they were really on tonight. Weren't they? The heart attack lift that they invented. By the way, the marks for Laura Handy and Jonathan Hunt range from 4.8 up to 5.5 overall, and they are currently in fourth place. Trying to pull off a major upset here, defeating the reigning champions, Ina and Zimmerman. Some mistakes, obviously, already in the program, but we'll have to wait and see what Ina and Zimmerman do next. They'll be the last to skate. Picture Legends of the Fall. I know that because I'm a fair skater and I can tell when a lift isn't looking just the way it should. He was a little bit unstable on that. I think maybe a little gun shy because I think that was the lift he was doing when he fell. It was. It was. Well, there were some wonderful moments of that program, but unfortunately, some mistakes, too. But they've shown us a lot of courage, and... Their mom, Georgia Hartzell, with her head down right now, maybe thankful that they got through that. They have been through so many injuries, including the 12 stitches in the head that Steve sustained earlier this week. Maybe not their best performance, but again, perseverance, the name of the game. They got through it.
love the pattern and the direction that this throw triple Sakao has. And look at the nice landing. Hands going out, stopping the rotation. Beautiful. This is the same throw triple Sakao that we just saw. This is ABC Sports Stro Motion. Notice as Steven lifts his partner off the ice, this is the throw triple Sakao. He turns forward. She rotates three times, and the left leg and the arms going out stop the rotation for a nice landing. These are the side-by-side -side triple toe loops. Steven actually gets up in the air and does a nice one, but Danielle crashes to the ice. Unfortunate, the worst feeling when you see your partner fall like that. Steve Hartzell for technical now. 5.3, 5.5. Five, and here are the marks six, as five, Steve Hartzell seven, five, point, has his head five, in his hands. Five, he knows five, that they're not going to be good enough. Five, Technical merit marks. Five, well, what he's five. worried about is losing and their marks the spot on the world team. 5.4, 5.3. Remember, five, two spots six, available five, on the world six, team. The presentation five, marks, seven, there they are. Five, and the Hartzells in six, second place five, point, six, and as five, they both two. try to put a smile on their faces and wave to the crowd. And not a happy face, but they are not happy at all right now. Scott and Dulabon in the lead. So it comes down to this. Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman, the reigning champions, are on the ice right after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The final pair taking the ice, trying to win the gold medal for the second straight season. Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman in second place after the short program, but the door is open. The Hartzells, of course, now behind Scott and Dulabon, who have the lead. Well, I think they were stunned after that short program, and I think that they are not taking anything for granted anymore. Variations on a theme of Paganini by Andrew Lloyd Webber. They will open up with the side-by-side, -side, triple toe loops. Solid. The side by side double axle. Solid again. Watch the height they get on this split triple twist lift. Remember, they are being coached by Tamara Mosvina, one of the greatest coaches of all time in pair skating, and she has helped them so much with their confidence and their look on the ice. This is a team that competes with the best in the world all season long. We've seen them through the top series, the Grand Prix series, so that's why it was such a surprise, their struggles in the short program. Triple loop. Oh. She didn't get up quite high enough to finish the rotation. She usually just sails on that throw jump. Peter, when you were skating with your sister Kitty onto four U.S. titles, how difficult did it become year after year to sustain that excellence and to stay at the top? Indeed, it was difficult because each year you tried to set a higher standard than you had from the year before. So you always wanted to prove yourself. And also, we always had the Olympics and the World Championships in mind that would come up right after the Nationals. Their unison is very nice, very polished. Pay attention to all these details. This is what they've improved on so much. And look at the spread eagle here. Very difficult to hold 
Kyoko in that position with the feet turned out like that. Very inventive. Very Tamara Moskvina. <laughs> A little Russian influence there. Oh, yes, their coach is quite a woman. Very nice throw, Triple Sao Cow. This is where I think they have really grown. The unique choreography that they have, the expression of the character within the music. Interesting steps. Very different. Yes. Counterclockwise rotation. Is there straight line footwork? Keeps up the speed and character of the music. Star lift, nice position in the air. Oops. Oh, oh dear. Oh. Not, not really. That is incredible that they, yeah, that they, <laughs> they lost their focus right at the end. I think they, they kind of took that for granted that they were gonna be able to do that simple move. Well, sometimes that just happens. Wow, what a night. <laughs> but I guarantee you, they are so happy that they got through their very difficult pair elements. They know they've done a good job. But they're going to want to burn the last 20 seconds of that yeah. tape, by the way. <laughs> the re rest of the program, uh, they will keep and they will watch. We'll have their scores to see if they can win their second straight gold medal when we come back to Boston. And a reminder, February 4th is ABC Sports All-Star Sunday at 2.30 Eastern. Yarmer Yager, Mario Lemieux, and Hockey's Best face off in the NHL All-Star Game presented by Nortel Networks. Then at 5.30 Eastern, the AFC-NFC Pro Bowl. ABC Sports All-Star Sunday, February 4th. Here's the throw, triple sow cow. They're skating nice and close together. She gets up into the air. Very good, and a good flow on the end of that jump. This is ABC's Stroh Motion. Now, notice how close together John and Kyoko are just before he releases her. Then when she's up in the air, she's got a slight lean, but what's fascinating is at the very end, just as she hits the ice, she goes from a bent over position and then snaps back for a wonderful landing. And then this strange mistake at the end with their choreography. This is the last thing the judges saw, not what they wanted. You can see them talking to each other at the end of that, too, when she got back up. Say, hey, what happened here? First set of marks, five sevens and five eights. But they're getting quite a nod from the judges here in spite of that. And they're very strange ending. Tomorrow, Moskvina's husband, Igor Moskvina, but tomorrow is no nowhere to be seen here. And the kiss and cry presentation marks now. Here they are. Well, they had a beautiful program. And good enough to put Ina and Zimmerman on top. They win the gold medal for the second straight season at the U.S. Championships. So a check of the final standings. The top two read like they did a year ago. Ina and Zimmerman, the gold medalist. Tiffany Scott, Philip Dulavon for the second straight year capture the silver medal. The Hartzels drop from first down to the bronze medal territory. And a disappointing finish for Laura Handy and Jonathan Hunt. They were in fourth after the short program, but they dropped down to finish in sixth. Back live now here in Boston, a large crowd on hand at the Fleet Center. Moments away from the final group taking the ice to skate for gold. The State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships. This ABC Sports presentation brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I am's Dog and Cat Foods. Nutrition that makes a difference. 10-10-220. Great rates all day, every day. And Excedrin. Excedrin, the headache medicine.
invincible. But Sarah Hughes is also bursting with confidence. Improved poise and artistry have given her a shot to dethrone the reigning champ. Harmony on ice. The ladies' free skate is next. Almost 16,000 on hand tonight. They've already broken attendance records this week at the national championships. We welcome you back inside the Fleet Center for the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships. The ladies' title on the line, the final group, with the top contenders already on the ice warming up. And here are the standings heading into the free skate. Michelle Kwan in the lead, going for title number five. 15-year-old Sarah Hughes right behind in second. Angela Nikodinov, she certainly has a shot. She is in third right now. And Jenny Kirk, the 16-year-old from the Boston suburbs in fourth. The order in which they'll skate, 12-year-old Beatrice Liang. And then Michelle Kwan, Amber Corwin, Jenny Kirk, Sarah Hughes, and Angela Nikodinov will be the last to skate. Well, there is Michelle Kwan, her ninth trip to the Nationals. Four gold medals in the past five years. It's been a remarkable run for the 20-year-old from Torrance, California, who made her first appearance at the National Championships at the age of 12. The most nerve-wracking competition is the National Championships. Michelle Kwan, She's incredible. as elegant as ever. So effortless. In a class by herself. I finished sixth and not skating that well at Nationals. I said, hey, I can do it. I can do better. And the next year, I said, oh, I, I can place. And my dreams and my goals got higher and higher each time I went to nationals. And before I knew it, I was like, I want to win. <laughs> There was Tanya, there was Nancy, and there was other great skaters. And I thought, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I'm with them. It was a big shock in general just to be at that Nationals. A lot of people expected me to win in 95, and I ended up fourth. And I said, what's wrong with this? You know, my best isn't good enough. So from then I said, OK, what do I need to become the best? In 96, I was on a roll. I, won, I think I won every competition. Ooh, look at that attitude. <laughs> what a difficult night. Things can go crazy, and it did that year. Carol Lipinski is next. Thought about opening the door. Here I was, walking around in Christmas in a cast, and not knowing if it was possible to go to nationals. And then having everything, you know, fall right into place. And actually, not just falling into place, I mean, in perfect place. I couldn't have skated better. Who said anything about an injury? Spectacular. As elegant as ever, Michelle Kwan tried to take her title back. The last few years, I've become more of an emotional person. I don't know if skating has anything to do with it. They were saying, like, can't you be beaten by these little ones? And of course I can be beaten. For me, it's like, I just hope I land everything, do everything that I'm supposed to. If I do that, then I'm happy. Now I understand that in this big scheme of things that winning is not everything. Well, back in 98 at the national championships, Michelle received seven perfect sixes in the short program. She repeated that here in Boston. She may be on her way to winning once again, but this time it's Sarah Hughes who's right behind her. The 15-year-old, this is all she's done with her triple jumps this year. 25 of 28, hitting at almost 90% on her triples, Peter. Well, she really has had a lot of success. Now, her strong points are that she is very competitive. She is still, however, working on her maturity. Well, how mature do you want her to be at the age of 15, right? That's, that comes with experience. Angela Nikodinov, the 20-year-old from San Pedro, California, may be in the best shape of her life. Well, Angela Nikodinov really is skating well this season, and I think she has a new mindset, and that is really a plus for her. However, her inconsistency can get her into trouble, but so far this season, she has looked really good, very comfortable. How about the 16-year-old from the Boston suburbs, from Newton, Massachusetts, Jenny Kirk? Well, she is absolutely fearless. She was great in her first senior international competition this year. Great competitive spirit. 
but she is trying to increase her speed. Well, right now, let's get a report from Leslie Goodell. Leslie? Terry, the youngest competitor among senior ladies is 12-year-old Beatrice Liang. Memories of Michelle Kwan's first senior nationals when she finished sixth and she was just 12 years old. There are no age restrictions at senior nationals as long as they pass their senior test, something Beatrice has already done. Now, Tiffany Chen, two-time world bronze medalist, is Beatrice's coach, and I talked to her earlier, and she said they've tried very hard to low-key the fact that they're even here, not telling many of their friends. But after finishing sixth in the short program, it's been hard to stay away from the cameras. <laughs> Leslie, it's hard to cover that up, I guess, and she should get used to being on camera over the next couple of years. A great future. What? Right, here we go. All right, I'm going to put you guys on the spot. Who uh -oh. do you like tonight? Well, I think if, if, everything, if everybody skates well, I, I love both of them, Sarah and uh, Michelle. Well, interestingly go. enough, I think that Michelle Kwan has really been mounting her charge this season, and this in my opinion, okay. she's going to retain her title and make it five. Hmm. Okay. We'll see what happens here, and we'll get more from Peggy as soon as we get her microphone working here. That's right. And once again, ladies and gentlemen. I think she said it was going to no be a great competition. That's what she said. All right, so we're getting set to go. What a great crowd on hand here in the Fleet Center as Michelle Kwan walks backstage. She'll be second to skate. Frank Carroll, her coach, also coaches Timothy Gable, who won the gold medal earlier today here in Boston. This moment, Peter, before you take the ice, perhaps the, the toughest moment. The Just focusing the on keeping everything California. together. You want to keep your timing Peter and not Jesus rush the Lee jumps because that could get you into trouble. And look at this young lady. Terrific. Beatrice Liang, only 12 years old, from Ganada Hills, California, trains in Simi Valley, sixth after the short program. to think at 12 years old she has the skills that she does in skating and she will open up with the triple flip right foot picking in nice a big smile she finished sixth at the junior national championships last season here the triple lots double toe loop just firing off these difficult jumps She'll do the triple toe loop, double toe loop combination. Very good. I do want to ask you, though, in terms of skating as a 12-year-old on this level, the wear and tear on your body, because as deep as the ladies' field is right now in American skating, we're not even seeing it here at the national championships. At least it's full effect. You've got Deanna Stilato, a young skater out with a hip injury. Naomi Nari Nam, who won the silver medal a couple of years ago, out with a hip injury. And Sasha Cohen out with a fracture in one of her vertebrae. Well, a lot of it has to do with the jumping technique, how you take off and land these jumps. And she has very good jumping technique. Her coach, Tiffany Chin, has made sure of that. She has lovely glow, lovely flow across the ice. And a great work ethic. She came here without her coach, Tiffany, on the first day and just skated through the practice, business as usual. Yeah, she did an entire practice without her coach even being here, and it was as disciplined as she does every day.
And that's what's so important for these younger ladies to take time to understand extension and line, carriage, posture. She's getting that. Reaching for the ice. Now here, the triple Lutz, the hardest. Oh, unfortunately, a double there. Losing steam a little. I'm not sure on television if you can tell how tiny she really is. She's only four foot seven. Once again, you have to look at the depth that the United States has in ladies figure skating, all the way down to 12 years old. It's not a bad way to get your senior career underway, huh? With this performance, Naomi Nari Nam, who won the silver medal two years ago, out with the injury. She's enjoying the program from Beatrice Liang, only 12 years of age. We'll have her marks, and then it's Michelle Kwan taking the ice, looking for another gold medal. Right after this, from our ABC stations. Not yet a teenager, and she just lit up the house here in Boston. Beatrice Liang waiting Beatrice for her marks. Beatrice Liang for technical merit. 5.2. Tiffany Chin, 5 .2. 85 5 U.S. 3. champion or coach. First set of marks 3. now for technical 5 merit, 5.2 up to 5.5. 5. 5. 5. Well, she 5. should be pleased with these 5. marks. 3 and 5. Remember, 4. at 12, gaining experience at this point. And her marks for a presentation. And now the second set will be for presentation, the overall artistry of her program, 5.1 up to 5.4. And she has a long way to go, Terry. Time to smile, Beatrice. You are terrific. Nice performance. Signs all over the Fleet Center. Representing the As the four-time national champion and three-time world champion takes the ice here in Boston. Well, in basketball, there's MJ. In figure skating, there's MK. Michelle Kwan, just 20 years of age and in the lead after the short program. Well, she is such a legend. Michelle has said, the worst mistake I've ever made in the past was to hold back, and she can't hold back at all tonight. Her music is the song of the black swan. Her opening jump is a triple loop. Back edge takeoff. Oh. Very solid. Oh. Wonderful position in the air and on the landing. And now coming up this very important combination jump. Triple toe, triple toe which she has to do to compete with everyone in the world. Oh, a single. Or was that a double? Double toe, double toe. Oh, she's... That could open the door. For Sarah Hughes. Absolutely. absolutely. And Nicodemus. Yes. And remember, Sarah Hughes has the most difficult program, or at least triple-triple combination. had a slight back injury the last few weeks, but we certainly didn't see any effects of that in the short program. And she has been wonderful in the practices all week. Now this combination, triple lutz, double toe. Very close oh, to the boards. Yes. So focused. Looks like she's taking everything very carefully. Slayback spin could have more stretch, more lean in the back. Now coming up in 
another triple, triple sal cow. Back inside edge takeoff. Very nice, very light. Now she looks like she's really taking command of this program. Now going into her triple flip. program, but she wanted to boost up this program to give it more content. After the missed triple toe, triple toe. Yes. Well, I definitely think the door is open for Sarah Hughes, but one thing I just love about Michelle skating is the fact that she exits out of her jumps with such speed and great skating, and that's so hard to do. And she took command of this ice, no matter if she missed those jumps or not. This is a beautiful program, and she has the maturity. You think they like her here in Boston? Listen to this <laughs> crowd. Well, the early bobbles, but that she kept her poise, and the program got stronger. We'll have the march for Michelle Kwan when we come back. And uh, this crowd didn't care at all about the early mistakes. And one of those early mistakes, it's not a disaster, but she really wants to get this technical content up. There's the double toe loop. She intended to do a triple, triple there. Only two doubles. But this is the triple Lutz, double toe loop. Look how close to the board she is. That's so distracting, but she remains in such good focus that she skates right through it. Well, her coach, Frank Carroll, was asked earlier this week, how do you see Michelle Kwan right now? He said, simply the greatest skater in the world. That's what he believes, and she may well be. First set now for technical merit, a couple of 5.7s, the rest 5.8s. Well, she did do six clean triples in this program. She had planned seven, so she really did skate very well. She got that content out no matter what but no. not that triple, triple She received seven perfect sixes in the short program for presentation. Look at this, two 6.0s and the rest 5.9s. Well, she is just so exquisite. 5.9, 6.0. Michelle Kwan obviously into the lead at this point. But a lot of skating left here at the Fleet Center. What a long wait that will be for Michelle, not unlike last year's World Another Championships when she was up early in the final group and had to wait to see how everything turned out. Amber Corwin. Which she won, obviously. Well, here is 22-year-old Amber Corwin from Hermosa Beach, California. She's been on the scene for a while. We know her well. She placed fifth at Nationals back in 97, but last year she dropped to 13th. It was a tough year for her. And she's skating to Ophelia by Natalie Merchant. And she's one of the skaters that is also doing a triple-triple combination, the same one that Michelle Kwan attempted in her program. Here comes 
her preparation for this triple toe, triple toe combination and watch the good lift she gets on these jumps. Very nice, she makes it look so easy. By the way, besides the medals, the gold medal in particular, what they're skating for here at Nationals, perhaps a trip to the World Championships. There are three spots available for the ladies this year. Now this triple lutz, double toe combination. Very nice, very gentle. She's got a nice pacing. Double loop. Nice positions on this combination spin. Good stretch. Could have a little more speed, however. Triple, triple flip coming up. It's forward three turn. She is just really on tonight. <laughs> Having no problem with these jumps. Been watching her all week. She's really skated like there's no pressure on her. Last year I mentioned the 13th place finish at Nationals and out of the spotlight coming into Boston this week. Much better event for her though. A little problem on that landing. <laughs> Not enough height and cheated short of rotation. Triple Sao Cow. It's a very gentle number, uh, choreographed by Brian Wright. She's coached by Charlene Wong and Scott Williams. They do a very nice job. She just changed coaches just a few months ago, actually. She can be very proud of that. That was a genuine smile on her face at the end of the program, too. You could see it. In fact, she had a smile before the program ended. She's got to be thrilled. After struggling last year and getting back to the form of the mid-90s, 96, 97, 98, Amber Corwin. Well, Michelle Kwan already talking to the media backstage. She's used to that. She's done that a few times. Her evening is done, but now she's got to stand back there and watch the rest of the skaters to see if she can win the gold medal. Jenny Kirk still to skate. So is Sarah Hughes when we return to Boston. There's some snow on the ground. They're expecting plenty more overnight. A reminder, skaters here trying to make the World Championship team will have the World Figure Skating Championships for you coming up March 24th and 25th. You expect Michelle Kwan to be there and certainly Maria Butierskaya, Arena Slutskaya, the top skaters in the world, the World Figure Skating Championships, March 24th and 25th. Meanwhile, Amber Corwin awaiting her marks. 
And here is a look at her triple toe. Triple toe, nice height and good control, nice speed in between those two jumps. And she made it look just effortless. No matter the marks, she is certainly pleased with her performance, but she likes high marks, too. First set for technical merit, 5.2 up to 5.7. That's a wide range. Yes, it is from a 2 to a 7, but she skated very well. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with the presentation. In some cases. There they are for Amber Corwin. So right now, Amber in second place, right behind Michelle Kwan. Terry Gannon, Peter Carruthers, and Peggy Fleming with you here at the Fleet Center. Michelle Kwan in the lead over Amber Corwin and Beatrice Liang right now, the 12-year-old. But taking the ice, the hometown favorite the from the Boston, from Boston suburbs. Here is Jennifer Kirk. 16-year-old Jenny Kirk in fourth place after the short program we saw her throughout the season. She was terrific in her major international events. And her coach, Evie Scottfold, said he's never had a skater more consistent or more focused. 2000 World Junior Champion. Opening jump is a triple sow cow. <laughs> Boy, that looked easy. <laughs> like textbook. Very straight in the air. First combination is the triple lutz, double toe. Oh, oh and blue really? that. Oh. Leaning. That is very uncharacteristic of this young lady. shows you that these young ladies are human. They do make mistakes. And those nerves can come in. And now this is her triple-triple combination. Triple toe, triple toe. Way to get it back. on the second, second one, but, but very nice. Jenny trained with the Boston Ballet actually danced in the Nutcracker for four years. Many of her friends from that are right here in the Fleet Center watching. Mathematically, Jenny Kirk could win the gold medal. She was in fourth after the short program, but she would need someone else like Sarah Hughes or Angela Nikodinov to beat Michelle Kwan in the free skate. She needs help because she's not in the top three. Certainly, she's trying to get in the top three and perhaps make the world championship team. Three will go. And her next jump, this triple loop, something that's been hurting her hip. Very solid, though. Layback not very fast.
entrance into this triple lutz. She does a little spread eagle right here and turns into this triple lutz. Very difficult and added a double mm. toe. <laughs> because she popped that at the earlier part of the program, so she put it in toward the end. Using some strategy, trying to rack up the extra credit at the end of the program. Just, thinking, like, just like Michelle did. Thinking on her feet. Yeah. Family, friends, and local admirers in the crowd here. The hometown girl from Newton, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston, and only 16 years old, Jenny Kirk. It will take them a while to clean the ice after all the teddy bears and the flowers that have been thrown out there. We'll have her marks, and then it's Sarah Hughes taking the ice with a chance to win her first gold medal after this from our ABC stations. Let's awesome. take a look at our ABC Sports throw motion. And this is really a great study of good jumping technique. Notice Michelle at the top of this jump. Perfect. Perpendicular. And then what's so impressive is the second to last frame shows her in a perfect position for the landing. Jenny Kirk following her performance here near her hometown. And here is a look at the jump she missed. This triple lut, see her toe just went in very crooked. It wasn't a solid takeoff, and there was no way for her to get up in the air and turn three times, and she had to just let that go. She was in fourth place after the short program. And now let's check her marks. For technical merit, there's the first set. Well, she did complete six triple jumps in this program. She threw in that triple lutz double toe at the very end and saved herself. Good thinking. Evie and Mary Scott Paul, her coaches, they coached Paul Wiley, they coached Nancy Kerrigan. Considering these are good scores. And her marks for And now the marks for presentation. 5.5, 5.7 range. You know, five considering 6.0 is a five perfect five mark, we're seeing 5.7s, very five solid. Five so Jenny Kirk moves into seven, second place right now. 5.7, and 5.5. So it's Michelle Kwan, Jenny Kirk, and Amber Corwin, your top three. Remember the world team. Three members go to the World Championships here to compete on behalf of the State Club of New York in New York City. Would you please welcome now Sarah Hughes. Just 15 years old, Sarah Hughes takes the ice in second after the short program. Last year it was all about proving that she belonged. This year she's out to prove she can win. Well, at 15, this Don Quixote program that she is doing is a lot to live up to, but Sarah Hughes is not your average 15-year-old. No. The reigning U.S. bronze medalist. jump is a double axle and watch the landing position that she holds very nice and now her difficult triple triple combination is coming up right now triple sow cow triple loop triple sow cow oh she's messed that that triple loop up almost had it that's her nemesis a more difficult triple combination than the triple toe, triple toe that Michelle and Jenny Kirk did. Because it's two edge jumps back to back. Now this triple loop. Beautiful. This is where she has improved so much. Her maturity, her expression, her line. This is a very difficult number to live up to, to skate to Don Quixote. There's a lot of attitude that you have to have with this. Now this is her triple lutz, double toe combination.
Think about how quickly she has progressed. In 1997, she was sixth at the Eastern Novice Championship. Last year, she was fifth in the world. That's amazing. And look at the arch in the back, the extension of the leg and the foot and the hands, everything is beautiful, perfect. She has two triples left in the program. The first, the triple Lutz. the triple toe loop. A little really. shaky on that landing. <laughs> a beautiful falling leaf, a nice extension there. Very strong combination spin as her final move. She is quite a competitor. <laughs> Good for her. Incredible presence oh, at 15. Does. Robin Wagner, her coach, she drives an hour and a half every day to practice and back home. Great Neck, New York. The home for Sarah Hughes comes from a large family. Five brothers and sisters. Her dad, John, a great national champion hockey player in college at Cornell. Now, was that enough to overtake Michelle Kwan? She has never beaten Michelle Kwan. Well, Michelle did open the door a bit, so we'll just have to see what the judges are going to do with all this. I think she has outskated Michelle as far as the technical content, that is the jumps, but as far as the artistry, I don't think she's on the level of Michelle Kwan just yet, but getting very close comparing these two performances. Well, we'll see. I don't know if the judges can be more specific. When we come back, we'll check the marks for Sarah Hughes. Will she beat Michelle Kwan? Then the final skater takes the ice. Angela Nikodinov in third place after the short program with a chance to win. Here in Boston on this evening, all lit up. Well, a reminder, having just come off the ice, there's Robin Wagner right next to her. Was it enough to overtake Michelle Kwan? Moments away from finding out. This is the triple sow cow, triple loop that she attempted. She doesn't get the rotation that she needs to land the second triple jump. A little sloppy there, but the triple Lutz double toe loop. Good height there, and then a double toe loop. So her technical content is good. Did and she skate judges. with the abandon so that no. we've seen throughout the year? Well, no, I think I saw her skate much better yeah. in practice. The number really came alive more in the practices. Didn't really have that finishing spark. Here's the first set now for technical merit. But she did complete six triple jumps in this program, just the same amount that Michelle Kwan did. Those were not as high as Michelle Kwan's but these are very close. And they're very close, but not enough, but Peggy. Not enough. Sarah maturity. Hughes, yep, into second place right behind Michelle. Michelle Kwan. So the bronze medalist last season, and now into second in position for the silver here in Boston. 
So here we go, the final skater taking the ice at the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships. The current standings, Michelle Kwan, Sarah Hughes, and then Jenny Kirk. But here is Angela Nicodino. Skating Club in Calipers City, California. Here is Angela Nicodino. 20 years of age from San Pedro, California. Ninth in the world last season. The U.S. bronze medalist in 99. Third after the short program. And you control your own destiny if you're in the top three. If she wins the free skate, she wins the gold medal. Well, she has a very fresh perspective on her skating now, and I think she enjoys it more than ever. And now the key thing is if she can make her new mindset work and uh, be more consistent with her jumps. She's skating to Sleeping Beauty by Tchaikovsky. Opening jump is a double axle. Mm. Very Beautiful. light. Nice, clean, flowing edge out of that jump. Peggy, look at the speed she's got going into this triple lutz. Beautiful. Very Whoa. nice. And she did some turns and did the double toe. It was supposed to be a combination. Angela improved so much in this past year. She has like transformed herself this past year. She looks completely different and feels this music completely different than she used to. Can you attribute all of that to a coaching change? Well, I think she really relates to her new coach and choreographer, Elena Cherchkaya. She really is her friend and her coach, all wrapped up into one given her her confidence back. Nice triple mm. loop. She's completed three beautiful triples. on the spiral. She has one of the best layback spins in the business. <laughs> to this country from Bulgaria in 1973. Angela speaks Bulgarian and understands a number of Slavic languages. Solid triple sal cow. She is skating the best I've seen her skate in so long and she looks absolutely exquisite. Her costume done by a friend of mine, Jeff Billings. It's beautiful on her. I think that that has added to her look on the ice. And now her triple Lutz. Oh, oh wow. She that is on. It's just great. She only has one left. That's the triple toe loop. She gets past this. Oh, oh good for her. Oh. She added that at the last minute. It'll throw you off when you change up your program like that. Not a good idea. But she had the skate of her life. Angela Nikodinov, she has never been better. She's never finished 
higher than third at the national championships. Perhaps until tonight. Michelle Kwan in the lead. Sarah Hughes second. Jenny Kirk third. What are your thoughts? Well, I think this, I'm so happy for her that she has finally found that that good zone. The comfort she zone. She loves what she's doing now, and it's working. Sarah Hughes wasn't sweating. I, she was backstage <laughs> smiling yep. still. Uh, she could challenge Sarah Hughes with her marks, definitely. Kwan Hughes, Kirk, Nikodinov. Where does she figure in? We'll find out when we come back in a moment. And this was her opening combination jump that she planned, the triple lutz double toe. She did a beautiful triple lutz, and we thought, well, she was not going to do that. And then she threw this in, took a step, and did the double toe. And this was her triple lutz later on in the program. Good lift in the air, very solid and real strong landing, and she was so happy. And this was her final jump that she put in as this triple toe. Here she goes for this takeoff. Really good in the air, nice and straight, and very, very clean. And then she threw in this double toe afterwards, and Cattino that wasn't planned, and it just didn't give that effort. Uh, really the only blemish in her entire program. Now, this is going to be close, especially when you look at the Sarah Hughes situation in second place right now. Technical merit marks, 5.6 up to 5.8. Really? 5.8s. Good scores. Her jumps were exquisite. The takeoffs, the landings, all very good. Presentation marks, there they are. Third place for Angela Nicodino. So it is not enough to overtake Sarah Hughes. You look at the judges' placements. Boy, it's fairly even right there. It is very close. So it's Sarah Hughes who captures the silver yeah. medal. <laughs> yeah, there they go. What a close one. And remember the top three. Now, it's not official because the a committee of the USFSA has to choose the top three to go to the World Championships. But you would imagine Hughes, Nikodinov, and of course, Michelle Kwan, who wins the title once again. The five-time champion now, Michelle Kwan. A check of the final standings. Kwan comes in, leads after the short program was fantastic and then wins with her free skate. Sarah Hughes holds on to that second spot and the silver medal. Angela Nikodinov third and Jenny Kirk, that's where she started as well after the short.